Malachi declared that revival would come suddenly. He said, Behold, I will send you a messenger. God said this. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. God's coming. He has come. He has done a work. He's done it to refresh you. He's done it to cleanse you. He's done it to tell you this. There's something in you that is valuable. There's something in you this morning that is valuable. God's not asking you to throw your whole life away. God, say, God says this morning, give me an opportunity to burn what doesn't need to be there. God's saying, give me an opportunity to show you what I can do with your life. While you're there in this place, and your mind is saying, you know, I'm not worthy. Well, my friend, none of us are worthy. And I know there's one thing about it. When Moses came by the fire of the burning bush, he got his attention. God didn't speak until he turned to the fire. Some of you want some great revelation. You've got to turn. We want some great, great thing to happen to us this morning. Come beat us in the head. No. Allow the fire of God. You may be sitting there this morning. You say, you know, Pastor, I served God. I was a little boy. And I got saved when I was a little boy. And I was a little girl. I got saved. Well, that's cute. That's one. What have you done ever since then? Where have you been? Where have you lived? What have you done? What are you living off of? Well, I've been with 30 men. I've been. And you want to keep telling me you got saved when you were eight? When I mean, we're living off of stuff, when we were eight, we got some junk at 38. I got saved when I was eight, and I that's all I needed. Fire that is not used will die. And the Bible said those that continue in sin, there remains no more sacrifice for your sin. Brother Beckham, I believe in eternal security. I do too. It's eternal. I'm not judging you to heaven or hell. That's not my call. But I'm going to tell you something right now. While you're alive, you need to check yourself. Because if you die, I'm not going to get up there and tell people, you know, they, they robbed the bank. I, that's not my call. To say whether you went to heaven or not. But while you're alive, ask yourself this question. Is something burning in me? Because what? It is a fire. It creates an atmosphere. When you, when you, when John the Baptist said, there's one coming that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, which is a comforter and an empowerer, but the fire is a cleanser. So what that means is when you're saved and you slip up, it doesn't mean you're on your way to hell. It just means you better light the fire and allow the Holy Spirit to do its work in you and begin to cleanse you and to cleanse your mind and to get your thoughts into, come on somebody, and come on get those thoughts into captivity and get rid of some of that junk that's trying to take you back to where you came from. But I've come by to tell you to tell that stuff to go back where it came from because it does not belong in your life because it's about to get burned up in you. That cancer's about to be burned up in you. That addiction's about to be burned up in you. That, that Clicking's going to be burned up in you. That selfishness, that hatred, that pride, that greed is going to be burned up in you. Amen. Amen. Yes. We need the fire. Yes, we, we need the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit and fire. Yes. Holy Spirit and fire. John said that's what he's baptizing you with. Right. And I, you can see her this morning and say, I don't want to do that fire. You don't have a choice. I mean, that's like when a Chuck E. 
cheese and don't see the mouse. <laughs> I mean, that's... I mean, that's... I mean, it's like going to McDonald's and not seeing the arch. But let me tell you something. When you receive Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit in your life. Yeah. And there's fire. Yeah. And some of you think it's depression. Seriously, listen to me. How you get saved and you come to church like, oh, we, you got to leave. This last Sunday was awesome in your life. And you just look at me and you go, I'm so bad. Oh, my life, man. Please, Lord Jesus. This is bad. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so depressed, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I'm going to call him out in Facebook. Everybody, my life's like, oh, God, it's terrible. That's the sign of getting better. Because you've been living in a fantasy land because everybody's been looking at you going, they're a hot mess. And you finally realize it. And it's like, like revelation. It's like everybody in church is going, thank you! Come, thank As soon as you put it on Facebook, everybody's like, yes! They realize they're a mess! I like to live on this. I don't want to do Everybody hates me. They finally know! <laughs> That's not depression. That's the fire bringing the contaminants to the top. Now do something with it. How do I get it? Be honest. That's it. Jesus doesn't want religion. He didn't come to die for religion. He came to die because you were sick. Jesus didn't come for the well. He came for the sick. The well, he got a physician. What that means is when those contaminants are rising to the top, allow the physician and the Holy Spirit just to sweep those things away from your life. Whatever you've done, God has forgotten about it. Man, man won't let you live stuff down. Man are going to hold that over your head for the rest of your life. But what you got to do is you got to rise above man. Amen. And allow the fire of God Amen. to consume you. Yes. To consume your life. Number one, Pastor, I want to be saved. I don't know the Lord this morning. I want to do what Romans said. I want to confess with my mouth that you are the Lord. I want to be saved. That's me, Pastor. Number one, that's my prayer for you today is that you will be saved. Number two, I'm in a place in my life, Pastor, I, I know I'm saved, but I'm struggling in some areas of my life. I want to rededicate my life to Christ today. That's my prayer for you. Number three, I'm serving God, Pastor. There's just some things I need to work on. I want, to, I, want, I want that fire to increase in my life. This message is for every person, from every degree of where you are in your life, the fire of God, that Jesus Christ came to give that to you. Jesus will give you fire. I want this year, 2014, for Providence Place Church, this is our year of fire.